Welcome to this short lecture on cholinergic receptors. In this lecture, we'll go through the subtypes of cholinergic receptors, where are they located in the body, and what effects you will see when you stimulate these receptors. So for this lecture in cholinergic receptors, the learning outcomes are what are the subtypes of cholinergic receptors, where are they located in the body, and if you stimulate them, what physiological effects will you expect to see? So cholinergic essentially means stimulated by acetylcholine. So this lecture follows Mike's lecture on adrenergic receptors, which we saw in the sympathetic nervous system. But this particular group, is found within the parasympathetic nervous system. So let's quickly review on what you will be doing when you have a parasympathetic response. So remember, parasympathetic means rest and digest. So while you're sitting on the couch, eating your food, looking at your phone or watching TV, you're gonna have this response. So let's have a look at all the organs that we'll use in a parasympathetic response. So we've got the eye, we wanna basically constrict the pupil and we want to contract the muscles within the ciliary body to focus the lens on something close. We also want to produce some tears for the eyes to keep it lubricated. Now the mouth, because we're gonna be eating, we wanna produce saliva to lubricate the mouth and start the digestive process going. Here in the lungs, we don't need so much air like we saw in the sympathetic nervous system, so we can start to bronchoconstrict. The heart, we're lying down, we don't need a fast heartbeat, so we can slow the heart. Here in the pancreas, we need to produce all those enzymes to break down the food that you're eating. And in the GIT, we need to mush it all up, move it all around and get rid of it. And then finally, down here in the bladder, we want to essentially be able to get rid of the urine when we need to. So that's all the effect that we're gonna be going through today. Now, cholinergic means ACH. However, with this particular system, if you look over here in this diagram, it's slightly different on where it comes out of the central nervous system compared to the sympathetic nervous system. Remember, the sympathetic nervous system came out of the thracolumbar. The parasympathetic comes out of the craniosacral. So the cranio is going to be cranial nerves, three, ocular motor, facial, glossopharyngeal, and vagus, whereas the sacral um, is going to be two, three, and four. However, this system follows the same pattern as we saw in the sympathetic nervous system. We have two neuron pathway. We have a preganglionic and a postganglionic. That's important. However, the difference is the, we use ACH in the preganglionic uh, neurotransmitter, like with the sympathetic, but unlike the sympathetic, which we used noradrenaline or norepinephrine onto the organs, here we again use ACH. Now this ACH binds to cholinergic receptors, and this is the crux of today. Now the subtype of cholinergic receptors is either nicotinic or muscarinic. These are named because it's the chemical that stimulates them quite strongly. Nicotine, like we see in tobacco, muscarine, like we see in a type of mushroom. These two chemicals are the reason why they're named that way. Now, we're gonna place most of the focus on today on the muscarinic, but let's just for completion finish off the nicotinic. The nicotinic have two subcategories. Okay, those that stimulate nerves, so we call these the NN, nicotinic nerve, and muscle, and those who stimulate muscle, NM. Okay, so for the nerve one, essentially what we're going to be doing here is sending an electrical impulse or an action potential out of the CNS, going along the preganglionic neuron, where we're going to release ACH, and then this ACH will then bind to receptors which then allow sodium to come in, and then we go on another action potential to the, to the organ. Now, the receptors that it allow it to bind, the ACH to bind onto, that's the N, that's the nicotinic neural or nervous receptor. So if I was to just zoom in at this synapse, what you would see, so here's the end of that nerve, and here's the next one that's gonna go along you would have these receptors sitting here like so, and that's nicotinic nerve receptors. And so when ACH 
is secreted across the synapse and binds here. These are nicotinic nerve or NN receptors. And by because they are ligand gated, that means when ACH binds, it then opens up a sodium channel. Sodium will start to go in and then eventually we get an action potential which sends it off. And there we go till we get to the end here. So that's that sub subtype of nicotinic receptors. The other type is NM, specifically to muscle like we see here. And that's going to be skeletal muscle. So similarly, we have these receptors on the muscle, sit in like this. Okay, and when a nerve comes in, like here, an ACH is excreted across the synapse and binds to these NM receptors, nicotinic muscle receptors. It results again with, because they're ligand gated, sodium coming in and slowly we get depolarization of the muscle membrane, releasing, ultimately releasing calcium, which then does the cross bridge and we get contraction. So that's the nicotinic done. So I'll get rid of this part and we'll focus now on the muscarinic because these are the, the most important ones for today. So for the muscarinic, there are five types. Okay, so there's five. So M1, M2, M3, M4, M5. Now M4 and M5 specifically focuses in receptors in the brain. We're not going to really go through those today because most of the pharmacology relates to M1, M2, M3, and most of these organs that we see down the side here relate to M1, M2, M3. Okay, so we're going to discard M4 and M5 today. So let's put M1, M2, and M3 here. Now, remember with Michael's video on adrenergic, he spoke about how Alpha 1, beta 1 are stimulate, they stimulate whatever they, the organ they bind to, whereas beta 2 and alpha 2 actually inhibit. Well, for muscarinic, the same thing happens. What we see here is M1 is a stimulator, M2 is a stimulator, whilst M2, I might have said M3, M3 and M1 are stimulators, M2 is an inhibitor. So basically, when ACH binds to M2, the result in is, is inhibition. Whereas when ACH binds to M1 and M3, we're going to get activation. So let's start with the M1s. Where do you find them? Well, it's pretty simple. There's only real two main locations. There's in the brain, and then there is in the stomach. So essentially, when you bind acetylcholine to M1 receptors with the stomach, it's going to, down here, it's going to release, the, the outcome is going to be releasing HCL and pepsinogen, which is both important digestive uh, enzymes and acid to help break down the food. Brain, essentially what happens is more ACH within the brain results in greater cognition and memory. So that's pretty straightforward. M2, pretty much the only place we find M2 receptors is in the heart. And so as you'd imagine, if you inhibit, so if ACH binds to M2 and we inhibit the heart, specifically the conduction system through the heart and the, the, the muscles of the heart, we're essentially just going to get a slowing in heart rate but also we probably get a reduction in atrial force, contraction force. So that's two done, pretty simple. We're so all the rest are M3. So the way to categorize M3 are the two main broad areas at axon, either glands or smooth muscle. So let's go through it one at a time. Glands here up, lacrimal glands, saliva glands. So saliva, I'll write tears, keep going down to the bronchioles. You actually get bronco, 
secretions. Um, pancreas, very important. So here you're going to get all your digestive enzymes. But also it's, it secretes or activates beta cells, so you get a release of insulin. And then going down to the rest of it in the digestive tract, you basically just get in any kind of other um, secretions like mucus, etc. So that's all the glandular secretions, and then we go to smooth muscles. So what are we going to activate with smooth muscle? Well, we have your um, iris, so this is for pupil constriction. We have the ciliary body, which is for lens, so I'll put lens. We have bronchioles, so we're going to contract those in, so bronchioles will constrict. We have the, the stomach, or all the GIT, so that's going to give you peristalsis. And then we go to the bladder, which is going to give you contraction of the detrusor muscle to get rid of the urine. And just for completion, you might also put uterus, uh, and that's obviously important for pregnancy and childbirth. So if you can remember that, as you, as you can see, the majority are M3, but if you can remember that M1 and M3 are all about stimulation and M1 about in, M2 is about inhib inhibition, therefore when you stimulate the M1, you're going to get a release of um, acid and pepsinogen. When you inhibit the heart, you're going to get a slowing heart rate and decreased force, particularly in the atria. And when, when you activate the M3, you're going to stimulate the glands, so you're going to get more saliva, more tears, more bronchosecretions, more digestive enzymes, more insulin, more mucus, and in the smooth muscles, you're going to get a contraction of the uterus, pupil constriction, uh, accommodation with the lens, you're going to get bronchoconstriction, bladder expulsion, and GIT peristalsis. So that leaves us with one final point. If you agonize these receptors, okay, so if you activate them, we sometimes use them as at we use the term agonizing. If you agonize them, you're going to get, maybe as a side effect, what we call dumbbells. Okay, so you're going to get diarrhea or drooling. You're going to get urinary output. You're going to get meiosis, which means pupil constriction. You're going to get bronco uh, constriction. You're going to get bradycardia. You're going to get emesis, which means vomiting, and you're going to get lacrimation. So hopefully now you can see what are the different array of cholinergic receptors, specifically the muscarinics, where they are located, and what you expect to see when you agonize them, which will make sense within the parasympathetic rest and digest response.